This is a little Cobb LED light. It's rechargeable that I bought a while ago and it's just never worked. And the idea is that it's got a button here and you click the button and it's going to, supposed to light up these LEDs and when it runs low, you can slide this out and it's got a USB plug in end. And when you plug it in, it's got some LEDs under here that indicate the charging status and it just displays kind of green with a little dash of red. And I discovered accidentally, well, I left it on charging for ages and it still didn't work, but then I discovered that if you click the button while it's charging, the LEDs do light. And that kind of suggests that the circuitry is working, but the battery is perhaps disconnected inside. So let's uh, do an autopsy on it and see what's wrong. So I'm going to stick the spudger into the case. I'm not sure if this is stuck together. I don't know if it's glued together or if it's a... Uh... Oh, it just clips. That's good. So, I guess would be that it is just something like the battery connection has come off, or the battery could be connected wrongly. So here's the uh, contents. There's the cob array. How's that held in? Is that just clipped in? Is it slid in, or can that be popped out? Maybe not. I'm not sure if that's just... That might be slid in from the end, but I don't think it is. Uh, the module is probably trapped in by this. It probably clips into a, a slotted groove. That's the, usually the construction of these things. So let's see if I can pop that off. might not work. Or I might be doing the completely wrong thing and I might just burst it. Uh, mm, it's not coming apart easily. Oh, that's quite promising. It's a, it's a bit crunchy, but that's all right. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, th this isn't inspiring. It's just not coming apart easily, is it? Oh, actually, come to think of it, this bit is the... No, uh, not really sure. Let's try uh, brute force on the inside and see what happens. The other thing I could do is just try and... Uh, Get the circuit board out here. Oh, there it goes. That's a... Uh, oh, it's screwed in. Right, I was using unreasonable force. So, the battery is connected to the correct terminals, theoretically. Uh, B minus and B plus. That has just popped off. I think it was soldered on properly, though. Um, it's... Interestingly, it's got the little chips. It's probably... One of them's a DW1, almost certainly. Oh, that one's not even marked. That's annoying. 2OLF. Okay, not sure what that is. But it looks like two... Oh, one of those will be the control chip. Uh, this will... The one that's not marked has a transistor next to it. Oh, hold on. I'm going to zoom in on this because uh, that way you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, where is something to point? Uh, I'll use a screwdriver to point. So I'm guessing this is a control chip, which is connected to that switch, and it's going to drive this transistor, which will then switch the Cobb LED array on. This here will probably be the protection chip for the... or a charging chip, probably something like a... a programmable charging chip for this lithium cell. But the lithium cell may also possibly have a protection circuit on it. I can see a little circuit board in there, so it does have protection. Uh, let's uh, strip that wire. What have I got to strip that with? If I pull this too hard, it may uh, possibly just pull the wire right out of the battery pack. So let's uh, measure that first and see if there's any voltage on it. Nothing. So, right. Okay. Let's uh, snap this off then and investigate this cell and see if it's uh, got a wiring fault in the cell itself. It looks a bit mushy inside, actually. It doesn't look quite right. I'm going to zoom back out again here because I will otherwise move off the shot, as I've probably done already. Oh, not to worry. It happens. So let's uh, 
see if we can get into this cell. Ugh. Oh, that doesn't look right. Oh, that's disgusting. It's all, it's leaked. It's been damaged in some way. It is not a happy cell. Right, well, that explains what the problem is there. Ugh. Right. Okay. Uh, knackered cell. So this means that theoretically, if I plug this into the charger. Ooh. Um, and I stick the meter across the battery terminals, it should show a voltage there. This is not recoverable if that cell's knackered, although I could try and find a, another cell. Yeah, it's putting out about 4.13 volts, which is a nice uh, voltage. It's not going to charge the cell right up to its max 4.2 volts. Uh, do I have a similar cell with a protection circuit on it? I'm just going to try and find if I've got one and see if I can fix this. One moment, please. So I have found a cell, but it's not protected. Uh, I'm not too bothered about that because this thing does have a charge protection chip on board and it is limiting the voltage to just under 4.2 volts. So I'm going to uh, throw some solder onto this and put this thing back together. I'm wondering if it's the mechanical construction was responsible for the damage to that cell. I don't think it was. It does have a sort of like, it looks like it's been punctured at the side here. I wonder if that happened... Um, at the factory or during shipping or something like that. It looks like it's it's not like really overheated or anything like that, it's just leaked. So let's uh, flow some soda onto these pads. These are tinned, so let's uh, solder this lead onto here. I have to say, the fact that this moves backwards and forwards and it just looks like ordinary wires inside just kind of alludes to a sort of design flaw. Uh, between the control circuit board and the, uh, the LED cob array, it is these blue wires and it looks like they could snap quite easily. So let's uh, solder that on. I'm not sure the state of charge of this cell since it was just randomly stolen from something else. Oh, it's actually got a charge in it. That's nice. So this thing's got uh, three modes. It's got the low, high, and strobing. Does it also have an SOS mode, I wonder, if I hold the button in? No, it doesn't. So uh, I wonder what sort of uh, current this thing charges at. There's one way to find out, and that's to plug it into a little USB-style analyzer. So it's now charging the cell, it's showing a red LED this time. Uh, it's charging at 600 milliamps, which, uh, well, 550 milliamps it's gone down to now. That's quite high for such a tiny little cell. It really is pushing current into that, isn't it? That's not ideal. Hmm, I'd have expected something closer to maybe 100 milliamps for something that size. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, try and pop this back in. I'll turn the circuit board over like this. I guess the lithium cell probably just stuffs in once that's in there. It's a tiny uh, battery as well, which is a bit disappointing. This really is a sort of fairly cheapish type of thing. And I'm guessing the lithium cell could just mush in there. Then the thing could clip back together. See, that's what I mean. When you slide this backwards and forwards, it is just these blue wires are just being flexed. That doesn't strike me as being great. Not to worry. It's what it is. It's back together. And it's working. So that's a kind of fix, although I'm not impressed at the current it's charging with. Uh, but I suppose it works now. Yeah, that's messy. I wonder if I should try and salvage a little circuit board off it. it that looks so, as though it's kind of survived. It's not really been corroded in any way. And it's got the actual DW01 chip in it. Does it say DW01? Yes, it does. And it's got the usual arrangement of the little DW01 protection chip and its associated transistors. 
But as I say, they're not really needed theoretically if this thing is capping the sort of current and the voltage um, to the thing anyway. Well, I say it's capping the current. It's not capping it much. But um, yeah, uh, not really impressed with that. Especially the fact it was delivered faulty. So no points for that one.